Uh, a lot of people thought he was crazy. Even I thought he was crazy. Um, um, thank you, Al Heyman wasn't his uh, advisor manager at the time. But Archer Bertabiev, he is now 8-0 with um, 8 KOs today on PBC on NBC. He defeated uh, Gabriel Campillo. Now, you may know who Gabriel Campillo is because he actually should have been the IBF champion. What year was that? I believe it was the end of, I believe it was in, in the end of 2012 or early 2013 when he fought Tavoris Cloud. And basically, he literally beat Tavoris Cloud up. Tavoris Cloud gassed uh, uh, horribly at the end. And I remember distinctly when, when, when the cards were being read, everyone thought that Tavoris Cloud had lost the fight, but Gabriel Campillo, he got robbed, and you literally saw Tavoris Cloud's mom faint. Yes, go back and watch the fight. She literally fainted because she knew her son was going to lose the fight. She was like, oh, he kept his belt. But then, you know, you know what happened then. He went on to get um, beat down by, um, you know, who? And um, then Arthur Bert the BF, when people thought he was crazy, at 5-0, and oh, went and took him on. And, you know, no, 6-0, I believe he was. 5-0, and 6-0, oh, I forgot. No, yeah, he was 5-0 and oh at the time. And then he took him on, um, you know, Tavoris Cloud and, you know, knocked him out. But Arthur Bert the BF is um, now with Al Heyman. Thank you, Al Heyman. He fought on uh, nationally televised um, NBC card. And he did what he was supposed to do for an opening bout. Great, smart matchmaking because they put a guy in there against a guy who's been knocked out before, a guy who's been knocked out bad in Gabriel Campillo. And then guess what Arthur Berta BF did? Literally went out there. And and this is um, um, a quote from a friend of mine, Kyle. He looked like a dead man. You know, the way he fell. And he just fell like, you know, like his whole, like his body. It, it, it's, it's hard to explain. So I'm actually going to have the highlights here on the channel. Thank you once again. I know i got to keep saying it. Thank you, PBC on CBS. Well, thank you, Premier Boxing Champions as a whole. It's plus, they've been doing a lot of advertising around here, too. So, you know, it's mutually beneficial. You think I see the commercials. I see all your ads on here. But listen, um, overall... The card was good. In fact, I'm supposed to do an entire video on, on reviewing the whole broadcast, so I'm going to save that for later. Um, Archer Bird to BF, look, look at it like this. Don't expect for him to be fighting Sergey Kovalev or Adonis Stevenson anytime soon. Now, you know before the end of this year that Adonis Stevenson is going to be, um, Adonis Stevenson and Sergey Kovalev are going to be taking each other on. I actually I actually um, watched the whole card in full, and I know that um, Adonis Stevenson defeated um, Saki Yobika in the purse bid for um, a Stevenson versus uh, Kovalev is on April 17th, 2015. So what that means is, that means... That means that um, it's going to be an open bid. And right now, I got Al Heyman winning. So, if, if Adonis Stevenson becomes the um, undisputed light heavyweight champion of the world, expect for him to have maybe... I'm talking now, I'm, I'm, now, this is all speculation, but what I'm saying is, as far as Arthur Bertabiev is concerned, expect for maybe an Adonis Stevenson, if he beats Kovalev, to fight maybe a Lucien Boutte or something like that. Because... Bertrand BF, he still has, you know, he only has eight wins. So there's still room for growth there to build him up into a superstar if you want to put him in to an undisputed spot. Now, I use this term a lot when I say, um, if, if Sergey, put it this way, if Adonis Stevenson defeats Sergey Kovalev, Al Heyman will have all of the Dragon Balls because now he will control what happens with the 175 pound division. You see what I'm saying? Because he will have the IBF. WBA Super World, the uh, WBO, you know, and the, um, and the WBC, the most covetous of all. So, there's a, so put it this way, the future is bright for Berta BF, but see, I already know people are going to say, oh, whoa, yeah, he would beat Stevenson up, and you know, he would beat up um, Sergey Kovalev and all that, but honestly, I don't see him getting at any of those fights anytime soon. I see him maybe getting to maybe about 15-0 and 0 before you think about him getting a major fight. Who knows? Do not be surprised if you see Arthur Berta BF versus Saki Obika. And that's for real. Like, think about it. Think about it. Don't be surprised. So, if you notice, um, He's going somewhat of an accelerated path, like kind of like Guillermo Rigondeaux did and kind of like um, Anthony Joshua was doing now, who's also for today, as far as fighting bigger name guys at an early stage in his career. I don't know if it's his manager. I don't know who that, that Blair Witch looking lady is he be with. He got this lady that be with him. Give me the creeps. No disrespect. She gives me the creeps. And then also, I was actually on a media call. I was I was on a media call for Donna Stevenson versus um versus um versus Saki Obika. The media call is on that channel, but what a lot of on, on the channel, but what a lot of people don't know is I'm, not, I'm I'm trying not to laugh because I was so offended. Like I was so 
it was it was a media call for Stevenson versus Beak, but they also had um, um, a segment where Arthur Bert to be Evan Gabriel Capilo was talking. So when I say this lady, you know what? I think I should upload it. I, let me see. Should I let you hear it? Should I let you hear it? I probably listen. If you want, if you want, listen. I believe it up to you guys. If you want me to upload this crazy media call, and what I'm saying is, it's not crazy. It's bizarre, like scary. And then once I saw who she was, like what she looked like, I was like, oh shit! I I, I want listen, 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 listen. Listen, I, listen, this lady gives me the creep chill. This lady gives me the creeps. And then the answers was like real short and, and Bertrand Biev is known to be a little bit cocky. I'm thinking like, well, is he cocky or is he like Nosferatu? Is he a vampire or something? Because they got like that, like that, put it this way. She looked like she got like this old ass house or like, or like the top of a hill, kind of like the Bates Motel. And you go in there, it's like all this old ass furniture and like them creepy Isabella looking dolls. You know, made Annabelle looking dolls. She looked like one of those dolls. But what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna leave it up to you guys. If you actually want to see the or, or hear the media call, um, and if you don't know who this lady is, then look up Arthur Burt to be as manager. In fact, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna I'm gonna upload just for you guys, even though it's a little late. I'm gonna upload um, his interview along with her because she translate for him. His interview along with her from the final press conference. I didn't get to upload it because um, it was real busy. I went to Danny Garcia Media Day, uh, work out that day, and basically I said I'm not going to upload it because now it's late. But now I want you to see who this lady is. She's scary looking. Tissue Controversy. Tissue Controversy Live, RealCombatMedia.com.